Hello, hope you're well. My name is Frank and welcome back to my channel. It is a pleasure to have you here with me today for this day of eating. And I'm gonna show you guys what I've been doing for the past week or so. And over these few months, I haven't been carnivore anymore. My diet has been consistently lean meat and grains predominantly, some vegetables, spices, herbs mixed in here and there for flavor, some fruit when I get a sweet craving. And I've certainly been having some type of like higher quality homemade cookies or baked goods every day uh, for just a more dense caloric source. Uh, some of you guys saw the beef and barley stew recipe that I made last Saturday. I've been doing a variation on that. And in addition, I just have a couple of other things I'd like to show you guys. So I guess the main thing first to touch on is what I've been drinking in addition to spring water. Uh, so this is water kefir. And if you don't tolerate dairy kefir, uh, this is okay. It consumes sugar, whereas other kefir strains tend to consume protein, fat, lactose, all different types of macronutrient sources. Uh, this is really good for just keeping your gut in check, especially when you're consuming carbohydrates. I actually bought this from a local farm, but that is way too expensive. And I have some uh, water kefir grains here that I'm going to make uh, some of my own flavored water kefir. And I'll show you guys how to do that once I figure out a solid recipe. Uh, but the main source of calories and nutrition for today is going to be that beef and barley stew. I'm using venison and a couple of different ingredients here today. I'm also going to try using uh, the Instant Pot. I, I just got this last week. I made some rice in it last night. It's just really easy, real convenient. You know, normally I have to saute and caramelize all these vegetables in a pan, saute and caramelize the meat. Uh, I think if I just throw it in here, put it on pressure, it might taste pretty good. Of course, uh, Frankie Boy is still gunning for his Whole Foods sponsorship, which is likely never gonna happen, not that I want one. And we do have um, the cookie batter, the vegan cookies that we made uh, the other day that are in the oven right now. But for now, uh, let's just show you guys the ingredients that are going into this and what I'm having today. I do have a video making kefir, talking about kefir, so definitely check that out if you're a little curious about it. Uh, just real quick and easy, I'm gonna put some coconut oil in here, maybe you know four tablespoons. I do have a video on that as well if you want to check it out. But onto our main ingredients. Of course, we have the meat. I'm using venison. I have some of the uh, leg steaks we have on Frankie's syringe meat chopped up with one rack of venison. The bones might add some nice flavor to this. I don't know. I figured I'd throw them in there. So we've got a couple pounds of venison. And this is going to last me, I would say, three to four days worth of meals. Uh, so that's how much meat I'm using. That's how much vegetable, how much grain, how much food I'm using. This is our flavoring component, just some organic onions, organic shiitake mushrooms, organic garlic. Very simple. I do pick the garlic out because it kind of gives me headaches when I eat it. And I normally do caramelize these vegetables, but we'll see how they turn out without being caramelized. Our seasoning is going to be just some bay leaves, thyme, salt and pepper. Very simple, very basic flavorings I found to like. Uh, you could also do things like rosemary, sage parsley if you'd like to. The grain is barley. I had to buy these bags because uh, I went to a different Whole Foods and the bulk bin was out. Uh, but I'm going to do about two cups of barley in here. And this is the starch source, a big caloric source. And barley even has some B vitamins. You could do brown rice. You could do wheat grains. You could do a whole different bunch of grains in this, whatever you'd like. Even just pour this over pasta separately after. So I have three quarts of beef broth that we're going to put in here. As always, everything's organic. And as with pretty much any health topic, I do have a video on organic as well. Why you want to go organic. And this is actually looking like it's going to the top of the max liquid. So um, instead of putting in another quart of the broth, here I have uh, some naturally fermented apple cider of a company I found. Uh, Redbird Orchard Cider. I probably shouldn't be talking about this because I'm not sponsored by them and it's going to sell out. But I found that they had a, a natural apple wine, basically. Um, and I bought some of this. I haven't really been using it. So I uh, will put maybe two cups of wine in here. And then I'm going to fill it to the top of the fill line with the rest of the broth. Now, now hopefully <laughs> this works because this is quite a bit of money worth of ingredients. Probably at least $30, $40 for a couple days worth of food. Meat stew. High pressure, more, 45 minutes. I think that's all we do. Yep. So we'll let this go. 
45 minutes. So this went for about 45 minutes on the pressure cooker. And then while I was upstairs working, it went for another 45 minutes keeping warm. I let the steam out. It took actually like three or four minutes just to let the steam pressure out. So let's open this up and see what it looks like. It smells really delicious. And the whole kitchen smelled really good um, even before I opened this. The barley looks really well cooked. We can take these, uh, these bones are probably really hot. Take the meat off the bones, take the bones out. So I'm gonna take out a couple ladles of the soup for what I think I'll eat in one meal so it can cool off. So I'll let this cool off for an hour or so. I'm in no rush to eat. What I will say is this tastes much, much better the next day. Like literally twice as good the next day. So what I suggest is uh, what I've been doing that is preparing this a day or two in advance and then consuming it over the course of several days. So it's really just an hour of work max and I have all of my meals for three or four days. And I think I'm gonna be doing this moving forward because I'm used to cooking rice, you know, cooking protein every meal. So that's a lot of work compared to just having this nice stew. And this really does taste delicious if you add the proper ingredients to it. And one more thing to consider is this will suck up a lot of the liquid. So although this kind of looks like a soup right now, there's gonna be very little liquid left in this the next day, the day after. In about an hour or so, we'll have our meal of cookies, stew, uh, some water kefir, and I'm gonna take some digestive enzymes with the meal uh, to help break it all down. In regards to this Instant Pot, I'm just gonna let this sit like this for the next few days, as I would normally have a pot on the stove top just resting. All right, really simple guys, I got my bowl of stew. I usually have two or three bowls per meal. That's what satiates me. After the first or second bowl, I'll get up, I'll take my enzymes with some of the kefir, and then I'll finish up another bowl or two of stew, and then I'll have my cookies while drinking the kefir. Usually, uh, the stew keeps me hydrated because the liquid volume's high, but when I eat the cookies, I get thirsty, so I drink the water kefir. Now, the moment of truth is how good does this taste? And obviously, as I said earlier, it'll taste better in a day or two, but it's definitely better than day one in the pot. So this actually is pretty good. Now the amount of meat in this is, you know, much less than I'm used to on a carnivore diet, but I do feel a lot better. And it's definitely still enough protein to uh, maintain my muscle mass. So that's the first bowl. Let me grab some more soup. Now, even though it seems like, you know, there's a set amount of protein in this, what you end up doing based on your cravings is you'll start picking out some meat, you'll start picking out some barley, and if you make this with you know too much or too little of either ingredient, you know while you're eating it, you'll realize that. From the nutrient profile, we have a ton of B vitamins in the venison and the broth, all of those animal-based minerals, and then with the barley, the mushrooms, the onions, all of the other things we added, we have some plant-based minerals, but mostly with that carbohydrate, with that starch, we're feeding our gut bacteria, you know, we have the fiber for the gut motility. We're giving our body energy. This is really great uh, to keep you warm. All right, so that's the second bowl. So let's go have the vitamins. So we got our third bowl of stew. I have some apple water kefir and I have about 15 enzyme pills. So this is a mix of several different enzyme supplements. Uh, I think I did a video on my Patreon. You could also watch my video on enzymes to understand what you would be taking in the context of this meal. And enzymes are based off of the macronutrient profile. So you want starch digesting enzymes here, you want protein digesting enzymes, and the fat usually aren't that necessary, but you definitely have to have the variety of the different protein components and uh, make sure that if the meal is kind of high in sugars, which it will be because we're gonna have some cookies, that you have some probiotic bacteria like this kefir to consume that sugar so that you don't have any dysbiosis issues. So you just take all the pills in a handful, Now this stuff, the way this farm made it, tastes really good. I'll have to mess around with the recipe myself, but it basically tastes like a slightly alcoholic fizzy soda, but there's no real sweetness to it because the kefir grains eat up all the sugar. So we'll finish up this stew. When you don't caramelize those vegetables, a lot more barley flavor comes out. Now, interestingly, I don't really like the barley or the venison that much on their own, but in this stew, it's really delicious. So I'm not really that hungry, but I made these cookies, so I'll have some. They smell really good. Nice and crispy this time. 
really crispy. <laughs> I left these in the oven a bit too long. So this is really just concentrated calories, very dense sugar, starch, fat, whereas that stew is pretty voluminous and not nearly as refined and concentrated as the cookie. I mean, the basic thing about fermentations is you have to make sure the bacteria culture is active. Otherwise, if you kind of drink it, you're basically just consuming dead bacteria, uh, which is not going to have nearly the same effect as probiotics normally do. So that's pretty much my meal for today, guys. I'm probably going to have one more cookie and I'll drink uh, this water key for uh, when I go upstairs. And I might have another container of this later. I don't know. Uh, but today I'm definitely not having two meals. Most days I will have two meals like this. Uh, usually the second meal is just not as large. I'll still have uh, the stew, the cookies, the water kefir, and I'll actually have the enzymes before that meal as opposed to during that meal. You guys can check out that venison on Frankie's Free Range Meat if you like, and hopefully sometime in the near future, I can get you guys all quality foods, including uh, water kefir and stuff like this. Uh, so thanks again for joining me, guys, and I'll see you for tomorrow's video.